Hello, ladies and gentlemen. And welcome, welcome, welcome. Here it is, Age of Wonders 4. It has finally arrived. Now, um, unfortunately, I'm only a small streamer, so I don't get to do any pre-release recording. I have to wait for it to come available to the general public. I am just one of you. But here we are, ladies and gentlemen, ready to go. It's It's all looking very shiny. I very much enjoyed the opening cinematic. That's all I've seen so far. So let's jump in. Now, I, I'm not going to lie, I have watched a little brief video or two. So um, I've basically seen kind of how you start and, and what you kind of do. Um, so we're going to start with the beginner scenario. I haven't played an Age of Wonders since number two. Um, back in the days when I think computer discs still existed. So it's been a long while. So we're going to start with the beginner scenario. Beginner scenario. We are going to put it on normal, however. I'm not going to drop down to easy. I... Probably going to try and play the other scenarios on hard, but as we're just starting off, I'm going to start on normal. Uh, high tier agent weapons, right? High tier agent I have no idea what either of those things are. A single army led by a hero. Be annexed by a city. When annexed, it will provide city and government special units in the rally of the legions. Okay, I have no idea what most of this stuff is, by the way. So a lot of this is going to be me figuring out what's going on. So, for any of you watching, first off, I hope you very much enjoy it. Um, if you do, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. And also, if you've got any general hints or tips, please put them down into the comments below because you will see me asking a lot of questions, mostly to the ether, because there's no one next to me. Um, we are going to make a custom faction, definitely. Let's create that faction. Uh, we're going to go feline. Like I said, I've seen, I watched what someone do a custom creation on YouTube, so I've seen some of the rough things. Now, I don't know particularly who's good at what, etc., so I'm not basing this on any kind of min-maxing or stats. Um, this is a complete role-play decision. Um, but out of curiosity, can it more easily resist enemies that use a lot of status effects? Never effect status minus one turn with a minimum of one. Okay. Uh, desert adaptation. Moving around and settling in desert areas becomes easier. Oh. They're obviously basing these guys on, like, on, on, I don't know. I mean, I thought they would have been based on tigers, except I thought it would have been jungle. Anyway, sand terrain costs minus two move points, able to build farms on sand terrain. Okay, that's a strange one for me. Can I? You can change the mental Underground water. Okay, there is, okay, no, I'll leave it as it is. I'll leave it as it is. Like I said, I'm gonna, but I would have, yeah, it would have been more of a jungle theme. You will pick your if that's what I was going for. Which defines your starting. Feudal, high, economy. barbaric, industrious, dark, mystic. Um. Now I was thinking more of you know, um. Uh, more of a cat, feline kind of thing. Probably wouldn't go industrious. I can pretty much knock that one off. You know, I was thinking more forest people as opposed to city city people. Maybe barbarian. Um, highly developed society whose members strive for harmony. I do actually quite like the idea of that one with the cat people. I feel like that might synergize quite nicely. Feudral, not probably too much. Um, you know, high high developed society makes me think, you know, they've been left alone. They, they're they quite a close-knit community. They all worship the moon. I don't know why cats worship the moon all of a sudden, but they should. Um, probably There's a, probably a witch link in there somewhere. Um, I wouldn't think dark. I'm not going to go tainted. I'm not going to go they've, you know, fallen on the other side of the fence. Uh, Mystic could also work. Culture of scholars driven to study every corner of Astral Sea. They prefer to find answers through research and arcane prowess. Uh, or Barbarian. War and aggression. They value strength for the charge head. No, I'm going to go high. I am going to go high. And go for that, yeah, that kind of close, tight-knit community. Um... Almost, if I can put it in a way, you know, imagine uh, left on their own, a bit like uh, um, Black Panther, kind of, you know, Wakanda Forever kind of thing. Um, so I'm going to go in that one. Um, I'm not reading any of these um, tips. I'm literally just picking full-on RPG. Defines their society? Trait points. Uh, chosen uniters, devotees of good, imperialists, prolific swarmers, ritual cannibals, ruthless raiders... Ancient Wise Ones, Gifted captors, Casters, uh, Mana Chandlers, Adept Settlers, Experienced Seafarers, Fabled Hunters, definitely, 
What does that get me out of curiosity? I should probably read. 100% resources from clearing an infestation, ancient wonder, or resource noble. Ranged units and skirmish units have plus one rank. Starts with extra ranged unit. Uh, wonder architects, great builders, runesmiths, probably not. Powerful evokers, scions of evil, shadow walkers. No, not those. Um... But yeah, hunters, that, I feel like that definitely goes in. We're not going to go for any of the barbarian traits. We've gone, probably should go for one of the ones in the high trait, to be honest. Um, although, oh yeah, maybe I, maybe I link in that, that, that little witch thing I mentioned a minute ago as well. Gifted catchers, ancient wise ones, mana channelers. Um, devotees of good... Chosen Uniters, but around based on cooperation, but will not hesitate to defend it. Nah, cats ain't nice. They share pure intentions, compassion, and unerring devotion to the cause of good. <laughs> they are focused on the glory of their empire and the development of their cities. Maybe that I think I might choose just on that uh, explanation. They have been around since the start of history, honing their minds in the pursuit of arcane. Uh, yeah, kind of. Cats have been very mystical since the dawn of time. They are blessed with an innate talent for spellcasting and rarely encounter problems that can't be solved with magic. They are tuned to the astral flows and support their armies by channeling arcane powers. Um, I think I'm going to go for ancient wise ones. What's that get me? When a tome is unlocked, a tome, a random skill from that tome costs minus 60% knowledge. One random research skill is already unlocked. Compatible society traits, gifted casters, shadow walkers. Uh, we're not getting any of those. Um... Ancient Wines ones it is. The cats have been around since the dawn of time, and they've always been mystical entities in our world, so we're going to do that. Tome of Zeal? Uh, probably not. Tome of Faith? No. Tome of Souls? Probably not. Cryomancy? No. Maybe Evocation. Warding? Maybe. Probably not the Horde. Pyromancy? No. Maybe I can kind of... The Rock? The Roots? See, I think it's going to be Beast, let's be honest. Who are we all kidding? Uh, which gets me what? Marcus Prey. Target enemy becomes distracted, suffers three sundered defense. Um, walk beside the animals of nature. Specialize in summoning and buffing animals and becoming stronger when standing next to them. I mean, yeah, this feels completely like it falls in. Um, minor race transformation, Tome of Beast. Makes the target race more beastal and connected to animals. When adjacent to a friendly animal or cavalry unit, they are granted... 10% damage and 10% critical hit chance. Summons a random tier 1 animal into the target world hex. Small chance of summoning a tier 2 animal. The animals possibly depend on the type of terrain this skill is cast on. Oh, that would be quite nice as a little game feature. Every time you use this spell, it changes depending on which terrain you're in. That'd be, that'd be quite nice. All friendly animals and cavalries gain plus 2 bolts of defense, plus 1 strengthened. And a wild speaker, a support unit that empowers your animals and affects hostile animals. Do I count as animals? I mean, I'm cats. Do all of my people count as animals? That would be quite nice. Um, initial bonus, plus two nature affinity, wildlife sanctuary, plus ten food, plus five draft per adjacent province with forest, unlocks the production of various animal units, counts as a forester. Must be built on an acquired province unlocked by Tome of Beasts. While the unit is the army leader, grants other cavalry and animal units flanker plus 10% critical hit chance. Okay. I feel like none of this stuff I've picked has synergized what together whatsoever. Um, but it's it's how it goes, quite frankly. Uh, champion. Or a Wizard King. I think we'll go a Champion. Again, I'm, I'm barely reading. I should probably have quickly read what was going on there. I'm not particularly reading any of the skills I get with this, as I've just got to mention several times. Sword and shield, lance, bow, spirit stuff. Uh, I'm thinking bow. Or lance, maybe. I think I can turn this... I can turn this guy around. Oh, where's your lance? Oh, I can't see it. Oh, well, I couldn't see his bow either. I could just see the quiver. But no, we're going to go bow. Uh, oh, you can change your race as well. Let's start with... I assume this makes him... Oh, male or female? Tall or short? I don't get it. I'm only changing one thing. And yet it's crazy. Okay, so male or female? I assume that is. Uh, physique. How fat or thin do we get? Uh, I'm going to put them pretty slim. I mean, it's it's a feline character. Arm length. 
let's not go too crazy, shall we? And I'm not going to go short. I'm going to go one up. Uh, leg length, nice and long. Skin color. Oh, here we go. Uh, yep, we're going to go um, panther style. Skin decoration. Oh, would you look at the... Can I, can I zoom in? Oh, I can. Fantastic. Uh, skin decoration. Oh, I do quite like that one, actually. Although it kind of almost defeats the point of the color of the skin. Um, oh, definitely. That, I think, is a very nice look. Uh, and the pose. <laughs> and he's dancing. He's still dancing. He's still dancing. Oh, bow's out. I'm going to go for... No, I think it was before this. This one. The nonchalant pose. Uh, head. No, we'll keep that as it is. Uh, eye color. Oh, quite like that blue. Oh, we're going to go for the yellow. Uh, hairstyle. I feel like I should probably zoom in and maybe turn a bit sideways for this. Uh, where was I? Uh, hairstyle. I'm going to go for uh, a full-blown mane. And we'll turn it slightly to the side. Beard style. We're going to do... Uh, we're going to do clean shaven, actually, I think. Yeah, we'll go... Oh, I'm torn. I don't, don't want to go big beard. Maybe a couple of... Yeah, we'll go, we'll go side whiskers, actually. Hair color, top. Um, I quite like the color, to be honest. Uh, hair color, bottom. Outfit. Let's zoom out a bit. We have armor, robes. Oh, slightly lesser robes, so to say. I'm going to go for that one. Helmet. Let's zoom back in. Oh, wow. We have like a floating helmet. That's fantastic. No helmet. I think I'm I'm going to go no helmet. I think that looks glorious. And the cape. Uh, I can't say that it looks like we have a cape. Oh, wow. I like that one. But it kind of doesn't really go with a quiver is the problem. Although it kind of works if you've got... I'm going to go with some leaves. There you go. Armor color. Uh, we're on kind of the bronze at the moment. No, let's not go silver. What does gold look like? Uh, a little bit too much for the leaves, I think. Uh, a dull bronze. Uh, sure, shiny silver. That looks quite nice. I think I'm going to probably stick with the subtle bronze, I think. Yes, we'll stick with the bronze. Okay. And then let's go to the race. Uh, physique. Yeah, keep that slim as well. Arm length. Let's decrease that by one. I think he... Yeah, my arm length was actually on medium, so which is, they should just be to match. Uh, leg length. Make them a lot taller. Thank you very much. Army skin color. Let's keep it all the same, please. Um, yep, on number four. Um, army armor color. I'm going to put that as a duller gray. Army hair color. None of them have hair. That's the problem. Anyway, army mount type. We've got a horse. We've got a tiny horse. We've got a, a feral beast. <gasps> We've got a wolf. We've got a... Oh, a white horse. Brown horse, white horse. I don't know. Would cats... No, cats wouldn't ride a wolf. That's that's quite amusing when you look at it. A cat riding a dog in the essence. But uh, uh, white horse... I'm going to keep brown horse. I think he looks better. So yeah, um, what is this that I'm selecting? Oh, the trim. 
Uh, let's keep that as green. Secondary trim. What can we can we see anything that changes? Not really. Let's go for the subtler green. I think. Now I'm going to stick it on white. Uh, and there you go. That's that's Your our race begins. Uh, chosen. Emperor, Lady Diviner, Empress. We'll go... L no, we're going to go Emperor, actually. Um, race name the Purring Diplomats. I'm tempted just to keep that. But no, let's get rid of all of these. And we now have to come up with replacements. Uh, cats names. Now, any of you that ever watched me play Crusader Kings 3, you know this is part of any game that I struggle with the most. What do you name your cat? Um, well, his last name is going to be Meow... I've done that wrong. Meow... Ikus? Akus? Meow Akus. Meow Akus. Um, glory to Emperor... Um... Wow, first name. Uh, race name. Uh, of the fluffy kin hunters. And his first name is going to be. Um, Snuggles. So we are playing as Emperor Snuggles Meowicus, champion of our kind, who will bring a new age of prosperity to the fluffy kin hunters. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. He is a cat-like being who moves with feline grace. They are resolute, shrugging off the hardest of experience with ease. They are used to the scorching desert sun. They take great pride in their refined traditions and wish for others to reach similar heights. They are legendary hunters, excelling in ranged combat and exploration. They harbor knowledge dating back to the beginning of time. Because everybody knows that everybody tells their secrets to their cats. So let's move ever onwards, ladies and gentlemen, and let's jump straight in. Let's have a go at the beginning round. This, of course, will be an hour-long initial episode, as, as you can see, we have already gone and spent 15 minutes just creating a race and getting ourselves started. So we are going to now jump straight in. A new ruler emerges. Explore your surrounding and expand your domain. Prepare to face your rivals and become the master of this realm. Your choices will shape the new age of wonders. The Fluffykin Hunters. We are feline and high. We are fabled hunters. Ancient wise ones. We are desert adaptation and resolute. Okay. Starting magic. Oh, of course. I think I can pick a random one. Friendly units in a one hex radius become awakened for three turns. What's awakened? Plus four spirit damage on base attacks. Activate any dormant traits. For any awakened, a unit gains strengthened instead. Plus 10% damage stacks up to five times. Becomes distracted. All targets targeting this unit are flanking attacks. Flanking deals 25% damage. Units in defense mode cannot be flanked. Suffers three sundered defense. Call of the wild. All friendly animals and cavalries gain plus two bolstered defense and plus one strengthened. I think I'm going to go uh, dormant traits. I don't know. I think I'm kind of interested to see what that what that kind of is. But I'm also quite liking mark of prey. Um, I'm going to go Mark as Prey. Oh, no, wait. I get all three of them. What am I even doing? These are my starting magics. I understand. Like I said, folks, you're going to be seeing me mumble through a lot of stuff. Uh, allow me to lend some aid or Emperor during this place. Click on the question mark button on the bottom right. Open additional advice. If you want to reread any advice, you can see it in the advice history tab. Take some time to look, look around. around myself to do surroundings. I know how to move a camera. Thank you very much. Hopefully there's not too much of this. Uh, to reset, press R. 
You can hey, take a closer look at the land by zooming in. Or get a better overview of the world by zooming out. Thank you. Hopefully there's not too much of that basicness. I mean, I don't really know how to play the game, but I know generally how to move around on a screen. One of your cities. No, I haven't. I've selected my army. Selected an army. Oh, we so we have two archers, a dusk hunter and a dusk hunter. Attack your foes and defend your land. A dawn defender, it's a shield unit. Tier one, which is a recruit. They're all up. Tier one soldiers, interesting. And a support unit, a tier two recruit, which is a sun priest. Uh, right click to inspect. Okay. Spirit Blast, single magic attack on target unit. Uh, plus 30% temporary hit. Heals plus 30 temporary hit points. Becomes Awaken for 3. Okay. Uh, awaken. Okay. Defense mode warding. Okay. Dormant Radiant Light. While Awakened, this unit gains Awakened Radiant Light. Base magic attacks have sufficient chance to inflict distracted. Okay. Uh, I assume, do they all have defense mode shield wall? Can end its turn and goes into a defensive mode. Dormant, shield of light. This unit gains awakened shield of light. Okay. Do they all have a dormant? They do, I guess. Plus one range, plus 20% accuracy. Okay. Very nice. And then I assume this is a scout. Yes. Um, he's probably going to be a bit scary. I've got a slightly smaller unit here, so... I'll send my main army north. Gold vein, resource node. When annex, plus 10, large vein of valuable gold. Uh, what was this? When annex, plus 10, a rich vein full of iron. Um, let's send you... You have an army, armies of the movement, an army stack panel. Hexoctopite, where you initiate combat. Come across our free cities in Ancient Wonders. Discover an Ancient Wonder, wonder. discover a free city. Okay. Uh, there's only one little bit of collectible, which is up there, but I will leave that for now. Let's bring you, I assume. You have encountered a resource node. They provide additional yield to the province they are located in. Nodes are often occupied by marauders. Uh huh. Okay. Um, okay, that didn't quite do what I was. Let's come down here. Let's start exploring to the south. Let's actually click on my city. Um, and we are going to attract population cost uh one out of 30 population it takes three turns until the next population i'm getting 46 food per turn uh we need to build what shall we build everything takes seven turns um let's just have a quick check about stuff food city structure multiplies domain population minus three income per turn 46 used to cities to grow new population Used to build cities. Used for recruiting units in cities. Um, ah, so I assume... Ah, okay, so you ha technically have two kinds of industry. Okay. Um, gold. Used for units and building structures. Everything costs gold. Got it. Used for casting spells and summoning units. Okay. Used to researching new skills from tomes. Income per turn. City structures plus 60. Used for acquiring cities and speeding up empire development and negotiations. Okay. And I also know that, yes, if you build certain buildings, you can get a boost. Cost 130 production. 60 gold. We really have quite bad production, don't we? And city stability. 30. Why do I have the feeling that that will... Uh, overall ranking, 2 out of 3. Okay, there's 3 of us here. Why do I have a feeling that that will uh, benefit me if I can get it really high? Uh, unlocks Stonemason and Light Forge. Arcane Institute. Mana Obelisk. Unlocks Granary. 
unlocks the market. Build one farm. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Annex new province. Province limits reached seat above. All needs one more population before it can... Ah, okay, so your population... Your population shows you what you can... Uh, sorry, allows you to get additional things. Oh, very nice. Depending on what we build, we would probably not build anything over here. Uh, so we're probably going to focus on a bit of food at the beginning. Um, that'll probably become a mine. Uh, which one benefited from the mine? Was it the artisan? No, that's the quarry, which we could also build next, but probably... N I mean, it's very useful to be able to pump things out faster, but obviously we can't... can only get problems when we get food, so I'm just going to go for the storehouse for now. It's going to take me seven turns. And then let's have a look at my units. Do I want to build a unit? Shouldn't that have cost me a lot of gold? Maybe I wasn't paying attention. Uh, Light Seeker, another scout. A ranged unit or a ship. I'm actually going to pump out another scout. Uh, again, now my gold didn't go down. Interesting. Maybe that goes down at the end of the turn. City information. Assign, give Whispering Stone, change city name. What is my city name? Seat above all. Um, you will now be the comfy hardboard box. Accept. Province, nothing province. Structures, palisade walls, blister towers, a throne, and a town center. Okay. So that's you. I actually, it actually wants me to recruit a scout unit, fair enough. Uh, and you, you can reach him this turn, so it looks like we're going to be jumping straight into Arcane a fight, so we'll give that a second. New spells and acquire new units. Makes the target the race more beastal and connected to animals. In addition to a friendly animal, animal cavalry unit, they are granted Arcane that. Uh, skill of two unit, Tome of Beasts, a support unit that empowers your animals and affects hostile. Morale neutral, poison blast, conjure animal, unleash the beast. Grants plus two vision range on the world map. Affect units of type. Scout unit, I have one in an army. Okay, let us go for... I'm actually going to go for a wild speaker. Although I say that, am I going to go for a wild speaker? Uh, and I choose one of the skills that seems the most useful to you. Um, no, I'm going to go for this one, actually. I don't know why it didn't let me pick the middle one, which is quite lucky. The skill over time using your knowledge income. Orders Once are required for you. you will choose between Got it. Three new skills. To enter combat. Inspect all well, and their combined strength. fuse auto combat, I'm not going to do that. Uh, so we do outnumber them quite easily. I'm guessing, uh, obviously, the middle bath would be about there. Allow the AI to use spells in auto combat, of course, but I'm not going to use auto combat. We are going to jump in, and we are going to fight our very first battle on the brand new Age of Wonders 4. Let's continue. Let's see what happens. Nuggles Meowicus attacks... Welcome to the field of battle. Here... You must kill. The defending army always takes the first turn. Fair enough. That's useful to know. Um, I assume that's types of damage that it'll do. As with the melee strike, it'll do... I'm guessing that's just impact damage. Uh, tier 2 recruit shield unit. Arcane Fey. Um, okay... You have selected a unit. It has three action points. Cacti are sharp. And using abilities. I mean, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Yeah, so I think if I move to there, he's going to be able to get me. Um, sure, times on eventual flames. Skewering on fire. Hold up to target. Morale neutral. Did that say battle mage units? That can probably hit me at a distance. Mystic projection. 
Cosmic bolts. Magical bolt at target enemy. Yeah, so I'm not quite sure uh, how that shows how far you can go. But I'm obscuring. Units in this location gain obscured. Ah, yes, of course. Um. Bring you over to there. I'm going to stick you in... No, I'm not, because you can't quite reach. I'm going to stick you in the middle. I'm assuming we do not get in each other's way. It has three action points to spend. Different abilities have different action point costs. Some trigger once per an action point available. On the movement, you can see the number of action points you will have available at your destination. Um... Say defense mode. Shoot bow. Or attack. Quite sure what those little moons cost. Out of range, out of range, out of range. I am going to... Stick you in there to give you obscuring. This is a support unit. Which can yeah. use magical abilities to heal and strengthen its allies. Spirit Blast. Affected by line of sight rules, cannot be used when within enemy zone of thing. Base magic. Okay. Heals 30 temporary hit points. Gains awakened for three turns. Sure. Doesn't that's just an ability, so it doesn't. Right click, I assume? Yep. Um. Okay, so uh, one, two, three, four, about a five hex range. So my hero might actually be in range of their missile uh, troops in a bit, but I should also. Let's move you forward one. You can. You can't actually move forward. This is a shield unit. Uh, let's. A line melee fighter. Let's move you forward one. Yep, I get the difference between units. Uh, next unit and turn. Although I say that as well. Ends a turn and goes into a defensive mode. And goes defense and extends its own control to all adjacent hexes. Immune to flanking. Okay. You have selected your ruler. Yes, I have. Around neutral. Health. Defense five. Resistance five. Okay. Surrender. We start combat. Well, is this the only one that doesn't tell me what it does? Combat history. Okay, I was scared to click on it if I was honest. Alignment, good. Plus one in relation with free season rulers that have neutral or better alignment. Random events that occur have a plus 10% chance to be positive. Spells being prepared. Okay, let's end that turn. Your spells are now ready to be cast. Spells available spells in the first. Can have a variety of powerful effects. Cry mana and combat turn. casting points to you. Right, so the spells are available. Um, obviously, the percentages on the top are good things. Retaliation. Oh, not like that. This unit has a ranged ability selected. Mm, range ability have an accurate rating, which is the chance of ability hitting the intended rating, target. Which is the chance that the ability will hit the intended target. Okay, they're in defensive mode, of course. So that's not 
the best. Um, Pain's ability for one more turn. Stick myself in the middle and use the cactus for defense. Let's go into shield wall mode. Hi. We're not doing too much damage because they are in defensive stance. That's all right. We'll let them slowly come to us. Oh, we only grazed. We are, however, taking down units, and I'm not entirely sure on this game if... Oh, that's a good point. I should have used Distracted. It's all right, we'll use that next turn. Plus two defense, plus one strengthened. The units gain strengthened instead. Plus 10 damage attacks up to five times. Now let's go one forward. And, like I said, I don't know if... Um, as in, if you get rid of units on the map, if it actually gets them weaker. But I'm going to keep... I'm going to keep taking him down. There you go, he's down to half his strength now. Um, and let's... End that turn. Ah, combat casting points. Oh! Definitely had me there. They have a lot of status effects, huh? Wow, he he absolutely destroyed me. Your unit uh, is within an enemy's zone of control. When a unit moves within an enemy's zone of control, it becomes temporarily control. pinned and cannot move for the rest of the turn. Temporarily pinned. Okay. Uh, yeah, he has no points, he has no points, he has no points. He just this absolutely nailed me. Casualties. Casualties occur when a unit Which also damage. causes a unit to deal less damage this with its attacks. The unit to deal less damage with it. Are immune to casualties. Yeah, so I was right. There is such thing as a casualties. Okay. Um, shoot your bow. Yes, definitely. This is a battle mage unit. Which excels at dealing magical damage and applying status effects. It is vulnerable to melee attacks and should be kept in the back line. Uh, let's. Yeah, let's definitely take him out. Because he did a lot of damage to me. So he needs to not be here anymore. You're going to throw out a heal next round onto this guy. He's also burning. How much damage is burning doing to you? Can I... I don't think I can see his statuses, which is a bit of an annoyance. Plus six, because the enemy died. Nice. And... Oh. No, they didn't get those effects. Uh, you can't move, because you're out of things. And turn. Stun came off. Please don't die. He died. Flanked. Interesting. I'm guessing obviously uh, the way you're facing matters. Um. This is a scout unit. You to heal. Whoops, I keep doing that. I keep clicking the wrong button. Let's get you to heal him. A unit just got hit by a retaliation. This happens when a melee unit is struck from within its zone of control. The number of retaliation attacks each turn shown by red marks under its banner. 
don't seem to be able to shoot him because... I don't think he'll get an opportunity to attack because he's just used his retaliation. He's just been wiped out. Uh, and that is the end of my turn. Okay, he just committed suicide in Cacti, I think. Uh, that wasn't the best first fight, if I'm perfectly honest. Um, we'll have to get used to that that fighting system. Goya so has been beaten in the Iron Combat Run with a loot and it's surviving units with experience. The more experience to get, the stronger your armies become. Uh, so by the looks of it, are you trying to say that you went up a tier? I'm not entirely sure. Uh, obviously, I could retry, but I'm not going to. Uh, watch replay plays. Battle won by Snuggles Meowicus. Rewards. Thornscale Serpent. A fighter unit sealed to recruit. Oh. Nice. Well, I got some... Uh... Take reward, I suppose. You what are you exactly? Unit. I have done. You are correct. It's a fighter unit. It is not stopped by enemy zone of control. Um, unit are reduced by minus 25%. Statically charged. When this unit is hit by melee attack, the attack sustains 4 lightning damage. Um... You can join that army. You are out of movement points. Oh, and what's this lovely flag we've got going on over here? Uh, and so that, I think, is everything. So let's end the turn. Ah, oh, that's an... No, I don't know who that is, actually. Oh, well, that didn't actually get me close enough to find out. I was trying to be slightly sneaky. Underground passage. Ooh. Pile of gold. Uh, and that'll be me for the turn. You have gathered a large amount of Imperium. This you represents the world. You can choose it to acquire new cities, unlock new empire skills, or speed up city growth. To acquire new cities. Unlock by new building parts of your wizard tower in your throne city, city, or by annexing ancient wonders. That's what we've been searching. This is the Empire Development Tree. Here you will specialize your empire Future towards affinities certain open more styles. options. Increase your empire. You will progress toward unlocking your next empire skill every turn, depending on your affinity, on your values. affinity values. Once unlocked, you can choosing a tone will alter your affinity, which represents your attunement to specific cosmic forces. To specific cosmic forces. You require a large amount of specific Okay. Okay, so we got plus two of that per turn, plus three of that, plus six general, which is the combination, and I get plus one astral affinity. Okay. And when I get to a potential level, I can spend points by the looks of it. Destroying an infestation or conquering a free city grants a stacking plus 300 relations to all other free cities for 10 turns. Plus one population. Wow, can you use... Okay, and then at which point you go up different ones and you get different skills. General research. Hi. Okay, those are my tombs. Diplomatic overview. I have two unknown, unknown rulers. No free cities and obviously only one race, which is mine. Quests. The military victory everyone needs to defeat all other non honored empires. Everyone needs to control enough provinces to unlock the Beacons of Unity. After beating three beacons in different cities, you're going to light the beacons during which hostile armies are spawned in an attempt to destroy them. Uh, cities directly or when they belong to your free cities with at least a bonded vassalage. Magic victory. You choose tier three, four, or five tomes. Score victory. The highest score when the turn limit is reached is victorious. Your score ranking, two out of three. Um, other ones, prepare a scout, discover an ancient wonder, or a friendly free city. Okay. My heroes. Inspect. We, of course, can equip him with... Lead your armies around the world. 
only yes they do equipment none you can of course equip him with all manner of wonderful things and upgrade him okay prison crypt magic materials okay i assume again you collect these and you can then create things cities i want my city and what it's doing and my two armies tier two recruit tier one soldier tier one soldier Soldier plus four, veteran plus four, elite plus four. Okay. And then if I look at him, he's only a recruit. Got it. So yeah, my dude did go up a rank and became soldier. Um nice. Very, very nice. And I wish he could use an out of thing heal and heal this guy. But uh that's alright, that's alright. Uh, so we are gonna... Have a last. Range units. Shoot crossbow over. Draw crossbow. Yikes. Uh, pioneer who can also shoot crossbow and a copper golem. Strength of 171. Oh, whoops. Get yourselves back in there. Uh, 386. So technically, I should absolutely destroy him. So let's... I act, Clearly, I now know how to remove a unit out of... Uh, 70 gold. Along with... 49 extra research. Fantastic. That'll obviously help push my research along. Uh, that's you with all your movement. My city's done. Advice... Encyclopedia City Management. Uh, managing your cities, food adjustments, government, knowledge, art, resource can spend on any city unit or spell. Locations and province improvements located in a city's domain will provide you with income. Choose a structure can to, be built build. to improve your city. Oh, right, yeah. Cities also recruit your units. You the helmet button there to get units not a problem this will this show me my spell list, you can cast yet, spell list. okay now that you have gotten making a full scout, army you will need more powerful armies to claim come across the round you can gain access to new kinds of units to research in and upgrade cities bear in mind scouts uh, this city has grown and gained a new population you are going to come up here Meeting kind-hearted Dawnspire. Magistrate Alara Lumine of the free city of Dawnspire greets you with some reverence. Salutations, Emperor Snuggles Miaracus. Your reputation precedes you. It gives us hope to meet an emperor who shares our beliefs. We look forward to learning from you, and we trust to respect Dawnspire's territory and independence. Give Alara Lumine one of your whispering stones to start negotiations and gradually improve their allegiance with you. Open the free city overview. Let's do that. So that is the free city overview. Uh, our allegiance is at that point, I guess. So we're neutral. They are first elves. They are good. Uh, they are tier one. They have pretty much the same things as me. And they are respectful. Negotiation. The Wishmer Stone may be retrieved from the free city at any given time, which will pause ongoing negotiations. I have one Whispering Stone. Well, why not? Because I don't think I'm using it for anything else. It will cost me 30 of that, and I will gain 6. Act of Cooperation. The free city opens its borders. Trading is enabled. Up to two resource trades are available. Magic materials can be traded. That'll happen in four turns. We are gaining three per turn. That makes sense. And we'll get to Pact of Cooperation. Min Allegiance 27. Min Allegiance 12. Ah, so we are starting perfectly on zero. Got it. 
Um, so 27 at the current rate will take nine turns. Two to the Rally of Legions. Free City allows building on claimed provinces. The Free City shares its vision. We're reinforcing combat against marauders and rulers the Free City is at war with. Uh, I'm not going to boost it yet. Uh, I'm not quite sure. Small monster den. Okay, let's keep coming this way. Let's uh, have a quick look. Um, yourself. Yes, we have a lovely bit of monster army there. Um, I am going to go to my left, I think. Yeah, oh, in fact, no, let's come over. I should have come over here first. Just see what we're hiding. Okay, there's, we basically got monster army. And then we'll come back to our left. Orders required. You are going, yep, I'm going to attempt to pick a fight. Let's see how this goes. Elements of surprise. Temperatures in the immediate area rise and fall intermittently as a group of elemental beings panic at your army's approach. The copper golem, seemingly the leader of this group, wavers unsteadily before you. It seems aware that engaging you would result in almost certain death, but is unwilling to abandon its group. Will you attack them or allow the copper golem and its temperamental allies to retreat? Uh, attacking them will lose us five alignment. Allow them to go will gain us five alignment. It will be removed from its location. Or I can receive 123 mana. The independent army will be removed from its location. I, I'm not quite sure. I'm going to gain alignment. Your alignment represents how others see you. This can be changed by various this actions you take. The base actions. relations value between you and other rulers and free cities. The base relations value between between you can see your current alignment in the bottom right. Many alignment changes are temporary and over time will disappear. Okay. I have neutral or better alignment. Random events to occur have 10% chance of... Claims on this province. Snug of Nyarkus, instant claims. Build outpost. Structure claim in a province for its owner and forming a foundation for a new city. Uh, an outpost can be built by a hero, be upgraded into a city, has various upgrades that can be built on it. Not be entered by enemies without trespassing, gather gold, mana, and knowledge, income from resource nodes and magic materials. Each outpost has a 10 gold upkeep for the owner. Um, a quarry can be built here thanks to province things, as can a farm. a nearby city that has grown in population. Uh, I will, sure, build an outpost. Um, and then we're going to keep on coming down towards here. Comfy cardboard box can annex its first province. We will annex... Uh, I don't overly know if I particularly need the higher gold. I'd love a good high amount of food. That gets me plus five. That gets me plus five. Oh, wow. This one gets me a lot of things. Plus seven and plus ten because of the iron deposit. Plus two and plus thirteen. Uh, the quarry gets me a straight up plus fifteen. Now, the storehouse needs a forester to get its boost. Um, I could build a forester here. It mostly gets me uh, production, but it gets me a very nice amount of production because of the iron mine. I mean, I suppose the quarry makes a bit more sense because... Well, then again, it don't know if it really matters. It seems they all give a base of... They all give a base? Is that correct? Am I assuming that? Um, and then they get other bonuses depending on what's in the area. So, for instance, there's a river here, so it makes more sense because the river is good for a farm. And then it also gets me the gold. 
Um, same here. There's a river here, so it makes more sense for a farm. Um, whereas the other things, yeah, just seem to give a base. I would have thought maybe a forester in a forest would give more, but clearly it doesn't. That's fine. Um, so it probably makes more sense at this stage. What did I say? I wanted a farm? No, I wanted a forester, but that's in four more turns. That will take three more turns, so that's all right. I can get another one before that happens. Um, a draft of food. Yep, that makes perfect sense. Uh, so I think I'm going to get the production with the bonus to my farm. I mean, I hope I'm not missing anything, because obviously it makes a bit of sense to build a quarry on an iron deposit, but it doesn't seem to actually make a difference to it. Um, but I'm going to annex this one then and get a bit more production, whilst also getting the most out of the farm, because there is a river involved. So let's chuck down a farm. And so that should help. We're now getting 50 per turn. And that also happens in three turns. So I can build a forester in three turns, although it makes more sense for me to get the gold mine. But I'm going to build a forester because of the trees and get that boosted. And then build my next building. Um, obviously, these then also have an upkeep of, there you go, an eight upkeep. I have a lot of gold. Um, and obviously, once I get... The node, that's going to go up by a good 15. So, I mean, that, you know, that allows me to have a couple of extra units. Um, and I believe, no, I'm researching animal kinship. When adjacent to a friendly animal or cavalry unit. Again, I feel like these should, guys should all count as animal units, but obviously not. Um... I assume on that point, it's literally like ranged unit, shield unit. So it will actually say animal or cavalry, I hope. Every yeah, we've placed our first province. I am going to... Do I want to pump out a couple more units? I am going to, because I also might need to defend my city. Um, let's pump out a couple of those for now. 363. And then a couple of those. That's still taking three turns. Good. It's only on plus 45, but that's still in within the numbers. Instantly complete this item based on the leftover resource needed. I assume that's just the next one that I rush. Not all of them. Uh, easiest way to check. Uh, whoops. As soon as I can figure out how to... Uh, okay. How do you how do you remove a unit? Huh. Interesting. You can't undo units when you've put them in the queue. Interesting. That seems a bit odd. Of course you can. There's a big X in front of it. Idiot. Um yeah, so that was just the next one. All good, all good, all good. Let's chuck him back in. Um, and that is the end of my turn. Obviously, the underground passage is potentially going to pop up to here. I don't know if you actually go to the underground or whether there's... Uh, Encyclopedia Throne City. Your throne, city. throne City is a, is a comfy cardboard throne box. Is the most important. Throw into any other city at any other time. Cool. Spellcasting... Yep, had a look at that a second ago. Stability measures uh, how people in cities outside of dark cultures would not suffer from low stability penalties. Generally, want to keep stability cultures, high. Which do not suffer. Which we're doing fine. We are stable. Fantastic. City stability. High stability boosts food and production income. Low stability reduces all city income. Very low stability can lead to city losing provinces. 
Uh, it drops as the city domain grows and could be regained by building certain city structures. Uh, plus 5%. Plus 10%. Plus 15? Yeah, fair enough. I thought that would have an impact. Uh, starting negotiations. Assign a Whispering Stone. I've done that. So, as I said, I think that... Enable Auto Explore. Wait one turn. Removes the army from the list of... No. Cool. So, I think that is us for the turn. Unit enchantments are spells which allow you to empower They apply your to all units with a specific role they and cost upkeep. They apply to all units with a specific each role unit affected. and cost upkeep for each unit with affected. Units or spells from the same These tone. These enchantments often synergize with units or spells from the same tone. Okay. Thanks. Makes the target race more beastal and connected to animals. Got it. Uh, it costs 150 of both. I only have 30, so that's not going to happen for a while. And more beastal and connected to animals when adjacent. Okay. Close. Um, and so hang on, what's the point? Let's just double check that again a second. Is that... Trying to tell me it's going to last for four turns or cost four to cast? I'm not sure. We, I'm sure we will discover that. Animal kinship has been complete. Select some new research. Wayfinder enchantment. Grants enchanted units very fast movement. Which, 48 movement on the world, 48 movement in combat. I think they can only have 32, so that's an extra 50%. Rewarding blessing, healing buff spell high. Target friendly units plus 20 hit points gains two bolstered resistance. Okay, nice. Grants uh, non high units. Dormant Guardian if a polearm unit. Dormant Shield of Light if a shield unit. Dormant Seeker non high units. Can I assume all my units are high because I'm a high race? Not entirely sure, but I'm not going to go for that one. I think I'm going to increase my scout's range, to be honest. New Empire Development Skill Tree available. Yes, I have two, actually. And I can potentially do them both. Founder of Absorbing Cities takes minus two turns. Newly founded or absorbed cities gain plus one population. Unlocks ability for units to embark and use vessels to cross the water. And for flying and floating units to travel over water. Um... Well, we'll probably leave those to excavate earthen terrain in the underground. Farms grant plus five food. Nice. We probably won't bother with those at this point, because I don't think I need them. I could be making a mistake. I mean, obviously, they could be useful, but uh, foundering absorbing cities takes minus two turns. I might jump back in in a minute and grab that if I turn the outpost into a city, if that's a possibility. And I haven't... I might actually be about to come across water down here. So, in fact, yes, that one could be useful. Uh, more scaries? Um, I'm going to assume there's more scaries there because it says... Oh, wait, hang on. Oh, no, it's just saying I can't move there. It's like, all of these cause a fight? Uh, no, they're just saying there's probably more scaries on the sheep. Um, let's move straight through the middle. Hello! NPC Army of Dawnspire. Well, I'm obviously not going to go and fight you. That would be silly. You're an army of Dawnspire. You're a very nice army of Dawnspire, I'd like to add. Hmm. Along with this army of Dawnspire. That's just... You guys are fantastic. Uh, I assume I'm not actually in your land because... Yeah, that's... What is this? A watchtower. Pride's vision in an 8x radius for the Empire whose army visited last. I assume there's probably an army guarding it. And for you, let's... Keep coming down this way. Oh, hello. What are you? Uh, oh, a 290. Maybe... 
maybe, maybe not. Tempted to see what happens if... You have selected a magic material. These are various unique effects if acquired by annexation or through trade. You get a powerful empire-wide bonus. Gathering all materials from a category. Said to be the remnants of a volcano's heart, they emanate heat eternally, resisting all attempts to quench their warmth. Weapons can be more efficiently forged when using the magical enhancement enhanced temperatures of these stones. Bangir Rockborn Journals from the Second Age, Part One. Uh, they are occupied when annexed. Unique global effects. Units cost 20% less draft. Very nice. Um, in terms of... Forge Fire Stone. Collection effects. Ring of Binding. Plus some defense, plus some resistance. Oh, Heroes Gain. Uh, plus 10% bonus damage. Mana Resource Nose Gain. Plus 10 Knowledge and Mana. And... I get... Plus 10 Imperial Income. Hasteberries, Silver Tongue Fruit, Rainbow Clover. Okay. Like I said, I'm kind of tempted to go through the underground passage to see what we can find, but that could also be a silly idea. I just like the idea of it. Day 6 dawns. <laughs> Whoa! Hello, beautiful! Look at this dude! Um, I don't know if this is going to explode. No, that didn't do anything. I would love to know how to remove the heads-up display um, on the game. I know that toggles, or it's supposed to toggle the grid, but it doesn't work. Maybe it works if I'm zoomed out. Nope. Um, that is that is just one special-looking guy. Um, advice. Let's get rid of the advice. Uh, I really wish there was a way to get rid of the heads-up display. Show hide minimap. Economic overview. Switch to world map layers. This is the underground. Claims on this province. Snuggles Miarcus. Second army highlights all possible outposts found in founding locations. Interesting. Um, uh, can I not use the underground? Or am I simply supposed to do this and then go in you come? Oh yes I am. And I'm underground. Um, outpost founded. Outpost Province. River Sand Mountain. It cost me minus 10. Those palisade walls in this outpost granting an additional 24 creation health. If a city is founded from this outpost, it will have the palisade wall city structure already built. Watch this outpost granting the outpost plus 3 vision range and plus 3 sensing range. There's a work camp and the work camps allow for the annexation of a single province to the outpost. It will start with one additional population and the annexed province already attached. Um, gold vein, although it's occupied. Um, can add the quarry, can add a farm. Can add a farm. Uh, I don't think I want to build another city. Not this close. Um... I'm going to build a watchtower so I can basically see what's coming. Orders required. Yep, we have lots of fun looking things over here. A cursed keep. That sounds fun. Bronze, ancient wonder. Discover an ancient wonder. Oh, I've just gone and done that then. Counts as research post, plus, 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 plus five for location health per quarry in city domain. Can be set as a unit deploy location. Adds the Brewer Ogre and Butcher Ogre units to the Rally of Lieges. This structure can only be entered and fought by one army led by a hero. Okay. Oh, hang on. We didn't read the law. The ruins of a massive stronghold dating back to an age when the first civilizations made a stand against rampant 
gargantuan monsters and magical storms. Although battered, its weathered walls still offer a degree of protection to those within, as well as those nearby during times of strife. Okay, we have lots of monsters down here. I wish I'd sent my, uh, my hero this way. I mean, what do we got? We got a 220. Oof, you're a 480. You're scary. 215. 250. Yeah, we got some... We got some pretty weak monsters. I'm going to see if my hero can, in fact, go left in the underground. Um... You have discovered an ancient wonder. It now needs to be explored before it can be claimed. Though only armies led by a hero can explore ancient wonders. While exploring, you can encounter obstacles which can be overcome in various ways. Though they can always be cleared through combat. Uh, only arms led by a hero while exploring, you can enter obstacles. Okay. Uh, I assume this is what it's on about. Yes, a silver ancient wonder. Complex is forgotten by the time. Herein did the Archons once worship the Old Father. However, the light that aided the masses in connecting with the Divine has long since been extinguished. These sites, once grand halls, now attract cultists and sinister, sinister entities seeking to awaken and twist its powers. Okay. Reward gold. Hands up gold is a guaranteed reward. Bonus rewards can be earned through different story event choices after completion. Okay, and uh, there's some red thing going on. I assume infestation spawner. A throng of vile monsters has claimed this region. If left unchecked, they will grow in strength, expand their territory, and send out invasion armies. By. Invading armies will be sent from the spawner location to your lands. If left unchecked for too long, However, it might prove Destroy challenging. Them, however, might prove challenging. The infestation will become active in nine plus turns. Okay. Well, you need to come up to there, basically. And I have set a move path. Oh, we have another one that's just come in. Order Empire skill. Destroying an infestation or conquering a free city grants a stacking 300 laden to all other free cities for 10 turns. That I will definitely keep a remember on before I go and attack an infestation if it comes to it. Um, unlocks the ability for units to embark and use vessels to cross water. That might come into effect very soon. That might just come into effect. Uh, let's end a turn there. Independence are moving. Day 7 dawns. Hello. You receive an official invitation from the friendly Magister of Dawnspire. The great Emperor Snuggles Meowicus. We of Dawnspire hereby humbly invite you to join the name day celebration of our Magistrate Alara Lumine. We would be honoured if you would attend, and we look forward to your gift. Oh, a gift? Uh, you are invited to celebrate the name day of Alara Lumine. What gift will you bring? I will lose 169 gold. One second, folks. I have a webcam attached to my monitor, and it's just covering my gold value. It will cost me 169. That's Relation of Dawn Spire... Plus 200 suede for 18 turns. Allegiance is currently 9. Relations, uh, I believe, is on 200. Relation value can affect the amount of allegiance gained during negotiations. And with very low relations, free city males will declare war. Um... Plus 100 minus 150. So I think I'm going to get swayed either way. So I'm just going to go for a small trinket on this one. Because... Uh, whoops, that's my city. That's the uh, great cardboard box. Um, alignment plus 100, suede plus 100, ruler or origin, champion of the people plus 100, allegiance per turn plus 1. Um, relations with... Yeah, it doesn't seem to want to give me too much information as to what does what, but I assume suede is about as good as it gets. Um... Yeah, pact of cooperation in one turn. 
So that'll be good. Um, oh, I'm, oh, see, I'm guessing that's from from visiting the tower. I've got a lovely bit of range now. I really should have sent my hero this way. Um, on that note, let's let's get you up to here. We can get a bit more of the map. Well, there's something over there. There's something everywhere, quite frankly. Uh, let's have you go past the Cursed Keep for now. Yep, we are straight up now. I wish to. I'm going to get the embarkment close. So you are just going to start going across the ocean, my friend. And... Oh no, that is a dead end. We don't go through the mountain. Maybe I do... Maybe I do go back above ground. It doesn't seem that my movement's that great down here. Uh, oh, you've now gotten an outpost. Oh, we've got a bit of gold up here. Another monster up here. And a Pilgrim's Passage by here. Another silver ancient wonder. How difficult is a two-star? <laughs> I think I'm going to come back up. Oh, we've got another one here. Slytherer's Den. So we might look at getting that, to be honest. There might be an infestation over here. We'll see what happens. Uh, set the production. Also, we can annex another city. Uh, what did we build? That's right, we built a farm. Town Hall 2, Atrium of Light. Plus one province annex range. Plus 10 gold income. Unlock special province improvements. Requires three on population to unlock. Special province improvements. Lucky can replace an existing province improvement. Oh. Investigation provinces. Spawn points. Okay. Uh, unlocks the tavern, which gets better when I've built two farms. Plus 20 city stability, which will be quite nice. Uh, I can also get a daylight spear and a sun priest, which is my healing unit, which is quite good. Uh, that will cost me six turns boosting a city structure reduces its cost by 30 percent boosts automatically apply when the requirements are met so that gets boosted at five population so i'll give that a second to be built to be honest um and so i built what did i build there's a question can you see what you've built in your cities. Uh, we have one farm. That is correct. Um, where, oh, where, oh, where can you see your current buildings? Um, I don't know. There must be a, a button somewhere. If any of you guys watching know it, please feel free to tell me. Um, I'm sure it's around here somewhere, and I'm just being extremely special. Fluffykin Hunters. Uh, we shall next go for... Build two foresters for a granary. Build a quarry. City structures. Our economic buildings. Which I would love to be able to see what we have. City information. Structures. Boom. Store hats. Which needs... What do you get boosted? No, don't dismantle. What do you get boosted if you have? I'm so confused. <laughs> I'm so, so confused. Um, boosting a city structure reduces its cost by 30%. Oh, that just makes it get built faster. Okay. Right. Reduces its cost by 30%. Uh, when it means cost, I assume it means gold cost. Um... Oh no, it'll be all cost by the looks of it. I mean, it all comes under cost. And lots of Magalonas. Build one quarry, forester, two foresters, or a quarry. Uh, so before we select any of that, I would quite like to build me... I think I'll probably go for the artisan workshop, which means I could do with a quarry. That's a mine. We can build quarries down here, but they're not the greatest thing. Maybe I go for a forester. What gets reduced if I have a forester? 
Plus 10 knowledge income. I'm okay for that at the moment. Uh, vendor. Which is boosted. Uh, plus 10 gold income. I'm okay for that as well. Uh, so most things are requesting a quarry. Well, two things are requesting a quarry. Um, plus 5 drafting. Plus 10 production income. Uh, do I throw down a quarry? I mean, that's better as a farm. It gets an extra plus two. Um, so let's just go with... I'm going to chuck a farm down here. Then I've got two farms. Which seems a bit over overkill. Um... But that will keep my food coming up quite nicely, to be honest. Um, and I'll still have another population in three turns. So at which point then, I think I am going to... I mean, I've got quite a good food region. Do I want to chuck down a forester? I don't really need a library, so I wouldn't be doing it for that reason. Um, like I said, I think I'm going to chuck a farm here. And get that extra gold income as well uh so i don't uh, so i wonder what boosts the other ones i mean i'm gonna have to pick them at some point to uh to get extra boosts coming in but it seems to be only the farms that get that seem to get boosts coming in anyway so that's the only one that's boosted but i'm not too worried about that i think i'm gonna go for the artisan workshop get a bit more production bonus and a bit more draft income coming in I could actually just hurry production, but then I'd be broke. So I'm not going to go and do that. Good 15. I wonder... Uh, and I think it said I can build something in my outpost if I so wish. Uh, which I'm going to do. Although, I wonder... Those work campus outposts, work camps allow for the annexation of a single province to the outpost. But say if I annex something here, um, if it's not, for instance, say I got this and I got and I got production bonus, would the production go to the nearest city? Or, because I mean my outpost, I assume my outpost is linked to my city? I don't know, it doesn't really say. Um, but I mean, yeah, it would make sense to get the gold mine here, although I have to clear it first. Um, 295, a whole bunch of fighter unit fiends, very fast movement. Uh, so they're going to be beating the hell out of me, quite frankly. Um, so yeah, that'll be fun when I get back up. Maybe I'll have to take those out and get rid of... I mean, a work camp will take me three turns. Yeah, it gives me some time to think about what I'm doing. I mean, you're going for four turns. The gold's going to take basically four turns then, or three turns to keep increasing. Uh, so let's end that turn there. Oh, wow, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> let's end that turn there. And I've just noticed this episode has now become an hour and 23 minutes long because I haven't stopped myself yet. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. It looks like the first episode is a double. Not just a little bit of extra added time for the time it creates takes me to create a race. It looks like the beginning episode is a double. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you have enjoyed this episode. As you can tell, I have. I've gotten so lost, I've gone 25 minutes over time. If you have, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. And remember to turn on your notifications so you get future, not future notifications as to what's going on. But until next time, remember the most important things, folks. Stay safe, stay happy, and stay healthy. We'll catch you in the next episode.